the Democratic leader. <clears throat> this month is Native American Heritage Month. During this month, we honor the contribution of American Indians. Also, of course, Alaska Natives and Hawaiians. But we don't have to look very far, Madam President, to see how Native Americans continue fighting for their heritage, and they really must fight for their heritage. Pick up a newspaper, turn the news on any channel you want, and you'll see what's happening at the Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is opposing the construction of a portion of a Dakota Access Pipeline that passes near their reservation where it crosses the Missouri River. They're concerned that the construction of the pipeline could not only destroy ancestral burial grounds, but also contaminate the water supply for the tribe, as well as millions of others who depend on water from the Missouri River. Standing Rock Sioux are fighting for their land, the right to clean water, clean air, and their history. And they're not alone. The Standing Rock Sioux have been joined by thousands of others, including members of hundreds of tribes throughout the United States. Last month, while I was in Nevada, members of the 27 Native American tribes we have in Nevada made it clear to me they stand in solidarity with the Standing Rock Sioux. But I do too, Madam President, and here's why. Here's why I joined with the Standing Rock Sioux in calling for an alternative route for the pipeline's construction. It's past time this situation be resolved peacefully. It has lingered for months, and the debate has descended into violence. Private security guards have unleashed attack dogs on Indians, resulting in men, women, and children being bitten, and some very severely. Police have used rubber bullets, tear gas, grenades, compression grenades, 300 people have been treated for injuries as a result of this violence against the protesters. The most severe injury took place a week ago when one young woman had parts of her arm and hand blown off. The violence at Standing Rock must end. <clears throat> I'm confident that President Obama's administration are taking the necessary steps to address the situation. They've done well so far. What is happening at Standing Rock is a movement that has captured the attention of the entire country. But we should understand the context of what is taking place. We should be mindful that the history of this region is fraught with disputes, and very few of which, if any, have been resolved in favor of the Indians. This region is fraught, I repeat, with disputes between Native Americans and the United States government. Disputes that originated more than a century ago but in the minds of the Indians, they're still very much alive. Last week, Kevin Gover, director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian, which is a wonderful place, put the clash at Standing Rock in historical perspective. And here's what he said, and I quote, take Standing Rock. If you know what that history of Sioux Nation is, you know that the treaties were made with the Sioux Nation concerning these lands that no longer belong to the Sioux Nation. And you know that the development of the Missouri River for the past century has always, always involved taking of Indian land. There were building dams up and down the Missouri River. And every Indian reservation along the way was flooded. Some of the best land was flooded, which only deepened their poverty and made it that much harder to climb out of poverty, which they haven't. We should know that kind of history says Kevin, Kevin Gover, and I agree, close quote. This is the history to which he's referring, or at least part of it. In the 1980s, Congress pushed the Sioux to reservations. I said, I'm sorry, in the 1890s, Madam President, Congress pushed the Sioux to reservations, took them off their ancestral land, jammed them into reservations. Speaking from knowledge I have what they did to Pyramid in Shoshone in Nevada is unbelievable. Put them in the worst places you could find. And that's what they did to the Sioux. 
In the 1890s, they pushed the Sioux into reservations. Then, two decades later, in violation of all the treaties they had, they built dams in the Missouri River that shrunk the size of the reservations even more. And then in the 1940s, the United States built yet another dam, putting the Sioux most fertile land underwater. I don't intend to have all the answers, Madam President, but I do know from experience that progress is possible when cooperation and respect form the foundation of fairness, especially on issues related to tribal rights and environmental concerns. I take one example that I know a lot about, and that's what happened in Nevada with a very large power plant, coal-fired, called the Reed Gardner Coal-Fired Plant, R-E-I-D-Gardner. It was one of the dirtiest power plants in the entire country. This coal plant was located less than a football field from the tribal reservation. Every day it dumped thousands of tons of toxins in the air, such as arsenic, mercury, and lead. Tribal members got sick. Of course they did. 300 people in the reservation were poisoned daily by the pollution. But working with the Moapa Paiutes, I called for closure of the plant. People thought, why are you doing this? It was the right thing to do, Madam President. It was the right thing to do for the environment, but more importantly, the a fair, just thing to do for the Moapa Band of Paiutes. Since that time, when we started this initial effort, three of Reed Gardner's four generating units have been shut down, closed, and the whole coal facility will be out of business within the next 90 days. That's pretty good. It's gone. Why? Because you had government, the government of local state government, the Indian government, and the power company all worked together to address this issue. It couldn't have been done without all three of them working together. I, I, I've said this publicly. I've had a lot of disputes with uh, the Monopoly Power Company in Nevada. But on this issue, Madam President, I have complimented them because they did the right thing. <clears throat> and with the Paiute tribe, <clears throat> <clears throat> Instead of having this toxic dump in a form of a coal-fired generating plant right next to them they breathe every day, they now have a huge solar farm. They're, they're created lots of construction jobs. That electricity is now being sent to the city of Los Angeles. It's been good for everybody, good for the air of Nevada, Good for the Indians with work. Uh, it's helped the environment. And the power company has made other arrangements for that power. And they did it fairly easily. The simple truth is, based on this little experience I had, you need to work together. Whether it's a Moab, a Paiute, or Standing Rock Sioux, they're exposed to more pollution than most Americans. That's the way it is. We don't talk a lot about the people who are severely impacted by a century of practically limitless pollution, Indians. This is not an urban, rural phenomenon. It's everywhere and it's dangerous. Research at the University of Minnesota found the difference in exposure to nitrogen dioxide alone is equal to rough, roughly 7,000 deaths a year from heart disease. From South Dakota to Nevada, Native Americans are on the front lines of these environmental and public health catastrophes. To make matters worse, heavy polluting industries are fighting to return to the days of limitless pollution under the next administration. Can the people of America expect our newly elected president to intervene on their behalf against the big polluters? Can the Standing Rock Sioux tribe depend on the man who was financially invested in the Dakota Access Pipeline? Probably not. This is about more than President-elect Trump. Pop lines or fossil fuel profits. What's happening at the Standing Rock is about respect for people, where they build their homes, where they raise their families. The violence and aggression against Standing Rock Sioux in North Dakota is a tragic example 
of the failure to respect people of long-standing grievances for how they and their natural resources have been treated. No one can see this more than the Indians. The Standing Rock Sioux protest of the Dakota Access Pipeline has everything to do with the history of broken promises and institutionalized disregard for the rights of their own land, as well as the trust relationship between Indian tribes and the federal government of the United States. While most stakeholders want a speedy end to this situation, they must understand that overreaction to protesters, violence and disregard for our history undermines the likelihood of a mutually acceptable solution and rubs salt in the already festering wounds. <clears throat> Profit should be not the determining factor of how this matter is resolved. <coughs> Pardon me. The Obama administration has recognized that this history means that a Dakota access pipeline is much more complicated than the water crossing permits simply. They're doing the right thing by working with tribes to develop a better consultation process. I appreciate very much what the Obama administration has done. They recognize that history means that the pipeline is more complicated than simply a water crossing. I appreciate the President showing the Standing Rock Sioux the respect to which they are entitled. But President Obama has less than two months left in his term, and it's becoming clear that the dispute at Standing Rock likely won't be resolved before he leaves office. I encourage the new administration and the Army Corps of Engineers to continue finding alternate road. There's one out there. This should not be that hard. There's no reason that this situation cannot be remedied in a manner that's fair at all. 300 people have already been injured. <coughs> Grenades. Dogs being sicked on these Indians. Freezing water being sprayed on them in freezing temperatures, below freezing temperatures. Our Native American tribes are looking to the federal government for help for once Let's get them some help rather than just continue taking from them. They want to believe that after centuries of wrongs, the United States will finally get it right. Indians want to believe that after, again, so long <clears throat> of being treated with no respect, that the United States will help and not hurt. Re relocating the pipeline to a more suitable area away from the Standing Rock Reservation would be an easy and historic step in the right direction. For the sake of our country, I hope that happens. Madam President, I see no one on the floor and would suggest the absence of quorum. The clerk will call the roll.